This episode and every episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Ironmonger Brewing. Visit Ironmonger at their tap room in Marietta, Georgia, or online at ironmongerbrewing.com. Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yo, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. Welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. And this week, we're talking one of my favorite topics, Saisons. I am Tim Dennis, and with me as always is my good friend and co-host, Brian Hewitt. Hey, Tim. So joining us today, we have Britt Tusink, the founder and head brewer of Frame Shift Fermentation, and Brandon King, owner of Stout Brothers and the Stout Brother at Stout Brothers. We're going to talk about the Saison style, good examples of the style, some tips on brewing your own, and just anything else that comes to mind about Saisons. Guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here. Not everybody Absolutely. at once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. You know, Saisons, Brian, we decided to start off with a bang. Saison DuPont. Yes. Kind of the flagship of the style, the epitome of Saison. Just a great, nice, dry. It hits all the character notes. So everybody enjoying DuPont? Is everybody a DuPont fan? Oh, love it. Yeah. Yeah. All day. Can't argue with DuPont, right? Just a great, great beer. If you can nice believe it, it's banana. been a long time since I've had one, and it's better than I remembered. And I thought it was yeah. good before, but I like it even more now. You know, there was a time that I said I didn't care from Saison DuPont, and I'm, I must have been going through something uh. odd in my life at that time. So <laughs> just, that's definitely changed now. Uh, just a momentary mental disease yeah, or disorder something or something like that. Like so, that. Something, that something had me messed up, but I'm good now. Been institutionalized. I got better. Got your thinking correct. I got better. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Britt, frame shift fermentation. Tell us a little bit about Frameshift. What are you all about? So Frameshift started in my brain about 10 years ago when I started in the brewing industry. And I was like, I should leave this law firm as a paralegal and be like, let's go forward. Dropped out. was like, I'm going to work at Brick Store Pub. This is a place I have lunch. Fell in love. Say, it's funny. We're drinking Saves Up DuPont to start with because that was the first beer where I was like. Got you hooked. Beer is DuPont. incredible. Yeah. Holy cow. It can be anything possible and then from that point on i saw kind of just how you know david sign had gone on to start creature comforts from brick store it was just like a jumping off hub i was like i can start here and jump and see where it goes at that point i probably had some stupid name for the brewery i had no idea how to brew beer i was just let's see how brewery much brewery mcbrewery <laughs> face <something laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it's like how much saint bernardus can i drink and spew to the yes when you see people. everybody else jumping off and starting a brewery you're like hey i mean obviously i could do that too I mean, it yeah. looks like a dope cliff yeah exactly right. all those limits going right off and I'm, <laughs> scared, I'm scared of heights yes now frame shift is currently you're in the planning stages at this point yeah so we're doing the really fun stuff as in okay. uh, business planning uh operations agreements all that fun jazz that's not actually brewing the beer while wow, we are brewing the beer so this year we got pushed back by covid and we've been just focusing on collabs and we were lucky enough that thomas from schoolhouse let me do my first one there we have several set up throughout the year and we're kind of just going to do a gypsy brewing year as we go in now you told me about a fun one you've got planned are you ready to to share who you got coming up there oh yeah yeah so birds fly south you're going to be doing a collaboration with them correct yeah yeah, so they do some good stuff. We had them on when they were at Shelton Brothers. We sat down with Birds Fly South. So, so sure. what are you doing with them, style-wise? I would hope it's a Saison. Okay, I would hope so. Because that's that sounds... Sean and I, I mean, if you know his Instagram handles, Saison Habit, and I have a passion for Saisons, but we're talking about it, and he okayed me to, to say, say it on the show here. Now. But it's official. Yeah, it's official now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but my wife and I, she's been in the beer industry for as long as me. We've been talking about this, and... We wanted to do it in the mountains, do a Georgia farmhouse brewery. Well, I do a lot of wild yeast cultivation. It's kind of my style. I do other things, but my favorite thing to do is kind of put jars in the woods and see what comes out of them. See right? what happens. Good stuff, man. It's, it's exciting yeah. to me. I'm looking forward to it, definitely. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Brandon King, Stout Brothers. You have right now, you have in Georgia, you have the Smyrna Beer Market, Correct. and you have Canton Street Beer Market. Yep. And up in my neck of the hood, uh, is it going to be Woodstock Beer Market? Yeah, it'll be the Woodstock Beer Market. Okay. Uh, that should open next month. Um, All right. This one's going to be a little bit bigger than the other two. Uh, Smyrna's our, our flagship, and it was kind of a small little neighborhood tasting room uh, right. that's uh, still rocking and rolling strong to this day. And then we opened up Canton Street last year. 
right in the right as COVID hit, which good was timing, good timing. Good timing. <laughs> and then uh, you know, I said, well, I've already opened one in COVID. Why not open two? That makes sense to me. Right. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to double down, and we're going into Woodstock, but uh, we're doing things a little differently up there. We've got a, a bigger space, about as big as the other two combined. So we're going to give that neighborhood kind of something that it needs, which uh, beyond great beer, obviously, and kind of put in a, a small artisan uh, bodega grocery store right. uh, kind of thing. So you can walk around, have a pint of something amazing, and uh, and go find uh, local produce from local Atlanta farmers, uh, locally sourced meats, uh, whole animal stuff. And You then, told uh, me you were going to have some Georgia cheeses, correct? Uh, yeah, we'll get a sweet grass, uh, sweet grass dairy uh, will be in there, and as well as... I don't know. There's so many to keep track of. There is, Cali Road and everybody Cali else. Road, yeah. Yeah. We went one time back when Five Seasons Brewing was here. They had a beer and cheese pairing event. And we went there and they did they had three of the Georgia creameries here. Right. With pretty impressive cheese. stuff. I, and they when did, you toasted over a candle. They did that a cheese neat, s'mores yeah. where they had a beef tallow candle. That you, yeah. They had like a cheese marshmallow <laughs> yes. that you toasted. And then it was just, it was delicious and just I, crazy. I need good. some of that in my life. Yeah, right? I don't even, it's cool. I don't beef know, tallow. I don't know Take is. a sip of right. the candle and, you know, just. <laughs> we'll <laughs> open up a ba- bodega next door and we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure yeah. it out. We'll make that work. Yeah, Should be exactly. good stuff, yeah. Well, Tim, I think we should get into the beers of the week. Now it's time for our beers of the week. Brought to you by The Nest. Craft beer and barbecue in downtown Kennesaw, Georgia. TheNestKennesaw.com. Well, Brian, you may have heard this before, but we've got a very nice list of beers to consume oh, today. Yes. Yeah, and as always, we want to thank The Nest for sponsoring this event. We really appreciate it. 48 taps of craft beer, barbecue in Kennesaw. If you're in the area, definitely put them on your list to check out. So as you might have expected, this is all about Saisons, Brian. We've got a lot. As I mentioned, we're drinking Saison DuPont right now. We have Allagash Saison Violet that we're going to get into. That's got blueberries in it. We have the Amagang Hennepin. We have the DuPont Allagash Collab Brewers Bridge. Yes. We have some Tank 7 from Boulevard. And uh, I think we have a Saison Brett from them as well. Yeah, I believe so. It's like, mm-hmm. I think that's a 2013 right. it's vintage. We have one that was super small batch called Total BS. That oh, was yeah. <laughs> a brick store pub and three taverns collaboration, correct? So. I believe so. I believe so. And yeah. we'll see what we get into. I have a Jolly Pumpkin, a Bam Noir, a Dark Saison, and uh, we'll just get into what we can. We'll go through as that's much as we can. That's not even all of them. I think that's there's not, more. That's yeah. not even all of them, but that's a good overview of what we got. So we're going to enjoy it. Brian, what's happening this week in the news? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. All right, so in news that will surprise no fan of craft beer, the Brewers Association reports that an overwhelming majority of beer drinkers want direct-to-consumer shipping. A sizable 84% of regular craft beer drinkers, to be exact, and uh, the pandemic has only increased the size and the interest in this. So direct-to-consumer shipping is exactly what it sounds like. You buy the beer, you have it shipped directly to your house, just like pretty much everything else you're buying right now during the pandemic. So, uh, and the interest is not one-sided. 70% of breweries that don't already offer direct-to-consumer shipping say they would be willing to consider doing so if it were legal where they're at. But at the moment, in most places, it's illegal. Currently, uh, interstate direct-to-consumer shipping of beer is only legal in 13 right. states. Okay. Yes. Good news, problem drinkers, an online writing platform is looking for beer hangover testers. That's right, Edu Birdie, a professional essay writing service targeting students, is looking for up to 40 hangover testers to gauge and compare the severity of hangovers between major beer brands. Each tester and three of their friends will knock back two to four different brands of beers over the course of three weeks. And uh, for each beer outing, they will be paid $300. It's not all fun and games, though. Testers will have to pass a test the day before and the morning after drinking each time. So if that sounds like the right kind of job for you, head over to AmericanCraftBeer.com for all the details and how to apply. According to Brewbound, Goldman Sachs says no and low alcohol beers could reach $3 billion by 2025, and this is by a conservative estimate. They see the no and low alcohol segment growing with a 25% compound annual growth rate, or basically from about 0.7% of the market to about 3% of the total beer market by 2025. They also point out the, uh, the success of the category in Europe, where it already has reached $5.9 billion in sales. If they're right, these are only early days, and we're going to see a lot more non-alcoholic beers out there and probably breweries specializing in them. I believe it, man. Yeah. You know, there's been mixed information on that, people saying that there's more hype than actual sales. The sales numbers look good. I think they're going to continue. I think there's a place for any beer out there. I think there is, for sure. Absolutely. Well, you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a break. 
But we'll be back very soon to talk more Saisons. Craft beer deserves craft glass. Thick Boys Glass has curated an online collective of glass artisans around the USA to bring you hand-blown beer glassware. These unique glasses are stylish and durable and have plenty of room to hold a tall boy of your favorite beer. Use code BEERGUYS at thickboysglass.com to get 15% off your order. Thick Boys Glass, that's T-H-I-C-C-B-O-I-S glass.com. Cobb County, Georgia is home to 17 unique craft beverage makers. This March, Cobb Travel and Tourism and Fireside Natural Gas bring you Bubbles and Brews Craft Beverage Month. Visit participating locations to get your Brew Pass passport and sample the featured brews. Make sure to get your Brew Pass stamped and cast your vote for your favorites and a chance to win sweet prizes all month long. Celebrate with Cobb's best craft beverage makers throughout the month of March. Get more info now at bubblesandbrews.com. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram what is now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to the beer guys radio show remember all episodes are available on demand so if you miss the broadcast get the podcast beer guys radio is available on all popular and unpopular podcasting apps now let's get back to Saison Talk. We have moved on to another Saison. Brandon, this is one you brought in, correct? Yes. And this is from Jester King. Did you say this is a collaboration? Uh, yeah, it's a collaboration with, I believe it's actually with a company called Buddha Brew. or Buddha's, Buddha. Buddha's Brew, okay. Yeah. It's got some kombucha, a little kombucha in there. Yes, huh? they're also uh, out of Austin. Okay. Both uh, Jester King and Buddha's Brew, and so they, they collabed uh, to do this. I picked this up when I was down in Austin probably three or four years ago. Uh, I think we'd gone there right after having spent seven hours waiting in line at Franklin's Barbecue. Uh, oh, yeah. To have the best barbecue <laughs> As ever. As is tradition, As right? As is tradition. Um, and then we went there, and it was uh, the, the first time ever they were releasing their spawn. Oh, uh, um, yes. Okay. So I was able to pick oh, up yeah. one through four, and then this just happened to be another bottle that I picked up in that collection. Batch number two from August 23rd, 2016 is what okay. it says in the bottle. Vintage, vintage. It's very good. It's a light, refreshing tart. Reminds me of, you know, Lambic or Goose yeah. uh, with the character there. So really good stuff. Uh, Saisons. We love them. We drink them. Brian, we haven't hit them as much as we used to. We really haven't, it's, it's, no. And, Brandon, I took a look at the tap list at both of your Stout Brothers That's locations, correct. and I noticed zero Saisons on either tap list there. You're about... Two weeks shy of, uh, I think we just kicked out Boulevard Saison Brett okay. from the Roswell location. Uh, every time that comes out, I always make sure I snag a keg and then sit on it for six to seven months. Uh, and then it, it changes from like horse blankety goodness to tropical fruit goodness in that time frame. But yeah, other than that, uh, I mean, Saisons have been uh, a style that uh, a lot of people have been sleeping on. Right. You know, everybody's always worried about their, their hazies and their pastries and their, their slushies, and they're, they're, they're ignoring some of the other styles. But I, I think we're going to start to see, just as you were talking about, everybody moving back towards non-alcoholic and lower ABV beers. You're going to see a, a return to lagers and pilsners, which was being discussed about the past year or so. And I think Saisons and farmhouse and table beers will kind of fit uh, in that realm, too. We talked to a brew pub that opened up here, and they ended up not doing it, but I thought it was a fantastic idea. They said when they opened up, they were going to do a table beer that basically was, they just bring some out to your table, kind of like, you know, the, what's the wine that, that is uh, like a Chianti or something? Oh, yeah, you go the, to the, the one that you, comes in the basket, You just right? do a little mark right. on your table saying how many you had. They ended up not doing it, but I thought that would be so great just having a table beer kind of ready to go there. Yeah, that so, would be a cool concept. That'd be very, well, that'd be fun. It. Are you, are yeah. you listening? Over there, Brit, <laughs> right? Yeah. Frame shift. You have the table, table beer. You have the opportunity to, to take this idea and run with it, and then you present it with zucchini bread. Exactly. Zucchini zucchini bread. Yeah, yeah. There count, you go. Count. I'm in. I'm in. But the saison. So the saison style, kind of profiling the style here, broadly or simply, it's a lower alcohol L. Uh, should be highly hopped, and was traditionally brewed on the farms in uh, Wallonia, the French-speaking part of Belgium. And it was brewed in the cooler months and then aged and frequently bottled conditioned to be consumed by the farm workers, the seasonal farm workers, which were called the seasonaires. Seasonaires, right. The season, yeah. seasonaires uh, to come out and uh, enjoy when they were working in the fields. 
And it was something that was low ABV, would sure. have been three, three and a half percentage somewhere in there. And uh, it was a safer alternative to water at the time, drinking your beer. And they would drink up to five liters a day just for hydration. Well, but it was also, it was hydration, plus it was also, you know, uh, there was some electrolytes, there's some, uh, there's other Minerals, nutritional vitamins. stuff yeah. like that. It's just like doctors say these days, even, you know, yeah. when you get done working out with a nice hard workout, it's better to have a beer than a glass of water. Than a glass of water. It was like the Brondo of the 1700s. Exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. Or I read that it was the uh, the Gatorade of the uh, the farmhand. The okay. farmhand sure. Gatorade of yeah, the, uh, pretty apropos. the 18th century, yeah. the 17th century. So I thought that was pretty cool. But uh, but in doing that, they, during the colder months, it gave those farmhands something to do. And it, they did something with that grain, so it didn't go bad. So they had two birds with one stone. It was so full of wind, you know, being able to uh, brew that and then have it available when you needed it when you're out there on the farm. So yeah. Right. And the style is very broad. And, Britt, you and I talked about that a little bit just before we, we went on the air here, that there's a lot of range in what a Saison is. So you brew and will brew Saisons with frame shift, correct? Correct. What's kind of your range of Saisons you've done so far? Uh, it can go uh, a multitude of ways. I just think it, I'm like a person who thinks that a Saison can go any way possible because you have no idea what they were producing back then. I mean, you have some historic evidence back right. then. But so what I brew is on the range of the spectrum as well. So any wild ale I do where I'm doing spontaneous inoculation, I'm using a Saison bill. But in that case, I'm using unmalted wheat to... Uh, Better use the wild yeast. But I also do straight up ones where I, I prefer Omega yeast, like Saison Steen's Monster. I'm just a kind of an Omega fanboy. When we brewed more, there weren't, and we'll dive into the brewing yeah. aspects a little yeah. more in a little bit, but we didn't have the same variety. We're not that far removed from brewing. We really are. But in the yeah. last, say, five years or so, there's become a lot more yeast available to the home brewer. So, yeah. Or the professional brewer as well. Um, and I like also just like uh, like Jason from Orpheus has a Saison that's what it's a the sour Saison sour plum at Atlanta right and that like blew people's mind in Atlanta and they're like every Saison sour and I'm like no a Saison can be in my mind a Saison can be anything it's not I mean not an IPA not overly hop no anything like that I mean you can use a heavy hop bill in the beginning for your bitterness but then oftentimes if you want to even get towards that sourness and what were they even using back then to say like okay were they doing a well, they did a lot of open you know at the time they then. didn't even know the role of yeast wasn't really known i think it yeah. was yeah. i think i made a note here it was like 1857 is when they really found out the role of yeast they knew yeast existed but didn't really know the part that it played in brewing so they either took the dregs from one batch to the next or just a totally open, spontaneous or open, fermentation. Or whatever was in the wood they were fermenting in. I try and, like, encompass all of the, across the board on the Saison style and not, like, let it paint any sort of lines on what you're doing. That's why I love the style of Saison is that you you can do kind of whatever that you want. Right. Yeah. Even looking back then, there wasn't a style from farmhouse to farmhouse where they said, this is Saison. You use the grains you had available, mm -hmm. you know, whatever hops you had available there. So there can have been a huge range. And like we talked about, you know, maybe, maybe they moved dregs over right. from one batch to the next. Or maybe they did the spontaneous fermentation. So maybe you had one with no tart funk in there. Or, you or know, maybe you, go, you had some with some, right. If you go up to the, the Scandinavian areas, you do what they did. They had their own version of yeast. They had those wooden collector things. And right. They just throw it in from one to the other. It's kind of like the dregs, like a dry right. version of it. And those are Considered it's farmhouse, kind of the a same Solera kind of thing. style concept as far yeah. as how they were moving the yeast. But, exactly. Would, uh, but they also do a lot of eight percent versus you know three and four percent over there. Well, it is cold up there, so they got to stay warm. Got to yeah. stay warm. <laughs> the warmer months when it hits thirty degrees, right? Exactly. The seasonality so, up there is uh, it's a little different. Right, ball ten game, right ten months of really cold, and then two months of whatever. You're saying like with the Solera process, I was going to bring that up as well. I'm like it's the same thing of keeping your yeast in a home brewery you're putting your dregs in a jar and you're putting in the thing in a professional brewery you're moving your yeast cake over after you get through the dregs and you're like oh boom here we go let's keeping go keeping your mother or trub excuse me i said the wrong word in your generation to generation it's evolving and then like with the fake yeast that's been coming out that's all in the saison family and you have people who are using like crazy sticks that they are like, yeah, I did the ring of stick. sticks there, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. he's talking about. It's, yeah. it's why I mean, it's it's awesome, but it's all naturally occurring, crazy yeast, wild yeah. ale. So like, 
that's why I like I love saying Saison DuPont is the baseline for all Saisons, but what is a Saison really? Sure. Like you and can like every book there, but well, it's, it's seasonal. It's, it's exactly what the translation is, which means it's exactly. whatever you have laying around right? to make this pale <laughs> well, ale that's lower ABV. And Phantome, I was reading, has a different one for each season. They've got, I think, Hiver or Hiver or whatever that was their, their dark spiced winter saison. I was just reading up on that just to see different variations on it. So and That's more Swedish influenced? I, I actually Belgian, don't know. Right? Is that, uh, is, is, is yeah, Phantome they're actually, Belgian? They're actually out of Belgium. But no, but I don't, that, that particular, that particular that season. Okay, right. gotcha. Yeah, that I don't know about, but they are out of Belgium. So. I don't know if we should let Phantom play anymore because they'd be putting pumpkins and spinach and stuff. That's yeah. true. I have had that one of their weird. Was a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bright green spinach it was beers. It. Wow. I'm kind of into it. <laughs> yeah. done for, right. Because that's I mean, a it, saison. It's there still, you go. It's still sold out. When I brought it in, it's still sold out. So <laughs> Sure. Yeah. And, you know, you can do a saison with really just Pilsner malt, hops, and a yeast. You know, that's really it. That's all you need to make it happen. But we do need to take another break. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And we'll be back to talk more Saisons right after this. Looking for a great craft beer to enjoy at home? Get your beer to go at the Nest in Kennesaw, Georgia. Choose from their 48 taps to enjoy there with some tasty barbecue and take some home with you for later. Grab a crispy Pilsner, a nice tart sour, or a bold stout to sit by the fire. Just bring your growler in and choose a favorite or two to take with you. It's our beer, your growler, at the Nest for your brews to go. Check out the beer and food menus before you visit at thenestkennesaw.com. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Cannibal! Cannibal coming. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates, WSLA 1560 AM and 93.9 FM in Slidell, Louisiana. Catch Beer Guys Radio on WSLA every Saturday at 8 AM. Let's get back to Saison Talk. Saisons. Britt, we have moved on to another Saison, something you brought along to share. We appreciate it. What what are we getting into right now? So this is a 2017 Lost Abbey Carnivale um, out of the brick store cellar. So I brought it in just because that's kind of where my, my journey started. Yes. Brick store cellar, hustling aged beers before they were cool to age. Um, so I asked old Dan Fontaine down there to send me with a couple joints. So we've talked about kind of the variations in Saison. This is a Brett, right? Is that yeah, Saison. Yeah, Brett Saison. Yeah. So. It's good stuff. So we got a lot of the discussion of kind of the classic, the foundations of Saison there. And when we look, we move into modern Saisons. Uh, they've redefined. The ABV is going to be higher than what the traditional was. And at least per, like, the standard for homebrewers is the BJCP, Beer Judge Certification Panel. They put out the records for what? Beer styles, the beer style guidelines. So modern Saison is going to be a little higher ABV. We could be running, you know, up there to like 6 8%. This one is 8%. I checked the bottle. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, I mean, we even go Imperial or that, so they, they even stretch outside of those ranges, and that's it. You know, you can have these style guidelines to kind of keep you in the lines, and uh, when Brian and I were brewing, bre- we had a lot of adventures because I wanted, as we were new brewers, to brew to style to hone our skills. Brian's like, let's go wild, man. I'm like, well, oh, yeah. Can- we can't go wild until we know we can go mild was kind of my take on it. So, you know, start it. And Britt, you're on Brian's team <laughs> on this a, one. Is that right? Yeah, I'm all that way. The first beer I brewed was a wild ale. Yeah. <laughs> I had a book on extreme brewing, and I was looking through. They had a special section on various malts and various adjuncts you could put in beer and what they would do and whether or not they were fatal. Things like that, like things that used in the days of yore that actually could possibly kill you, and but delivered taste. So, I, I look through that and say, what could I put that in? What could I put that in? I think Focusing you are allowed like one part per million of cyanide in your beer. See? There. 
You could do a little. Well, there's bit. a little bit of arsenic. That's in not a. That's not a joke. That's a written sign. Or is that saison. seeds or something like that? Something apple has seeds. apple seeds has a, a little bit. So it, theoretically, you could have a tiny cyanide bit in a beer. Yeah. A little touch of cyanide. Yeah, in just there. a little <laughs> bit. Just on the top. Uh, right. Salt this is bay, really if you will. Salt, salt bay with cyanide. <laughs> just a touch of kill. Well. The cyanide bay. Just the right amount of kill. Just right the right amount of kill. Just a touch. <laughs> Enough for flavor. That's the name of the beer. Enough right there. death for flavor. <laughs> Yeah, that's how you say. I was like, well, that's overkill. Brian's like, no, it's not, man. That's just, just the, the right, right amount of kill. kill. <laughs> that's it. So the flavors we look for in a Saison. What says Saison to you, Britt? Uh, what flavors are you looking for there? I lean towards Belgian styles, so I'm looking for, like, big clove esters. But, again, like like I say, like, I'm on the team where I'm like, a Saison can literally be anything. Like, what like what are you looking for in a, something that was brewed for farmers? Right. That's a – yeah. So it's a weird way that I look at it, but you know you have your traditional ways to look at it. But I I don't really look for anything in particular. If you tell me something's a saison, if I get a big hoppy nose on it, then I'm gonna be like, this is something different. If I get like huge lactic acid, I'm like, but if you have uh, that big hoppy nose, but you have those phenolics or the fruity esters and that that we get there, you can still have you know a hoppy saison. We used mosaic in ours. We did. We did like a flame out edition. Of gotcha. mosaic and that and uh I, again you know tasty saison but like you said it's such a broad style there's some clear definitions that if you drink something you're gonna know that's a saison mm-hmm. but then we look at i think beer de garde kind of falls in that ballpark table beers which is yeah, would probably be more foremost. close close to the traditional saison a table beer would be right mm-hmm. Uh, farmhouse sales is kind of a blanket statement that that really encapsulates a lot of these beers it's kind yes. of a family of beers i read that it, it could be expanded in some places to include like your sauties and goatland strika type of beers they're and farmhouse like, sales yeah, right yeah. yeah they're all all kind of like cousins to saisons and all kind of under that farmhouse umbrella but a lot of times when i use farmhouse i'm really kind of thinking saison i think a lot of people are like that dogfish head did a, a saute what with a tea at the end to so the ti yeah. um, a few years ago and that was phenomenal part of their ancient grain series yeah um they kind of played a lot towards that nordic style of farmhouse and saisons it was phenomenal so something i hear a lot of people or i've seen in a number of descriptors about saisons rustic and i struggle a little bit to kind of grasp or even explain when a beer is rustic what does that mean to you what are you getting out of it what not, are you tasting not refined that's what not i refined. would that's what i was saying not refined. i just think that the yeast the... speaks okay through yeah. that way you're like you're not letting like i said like on the hoppy hoppy side whatever like you definitely like experiment with adding later hop additions whatever but your yeast is what's really speaking in the farmhouse quote-unquote essence well to go back to what Britt was saying earlier though where there's nothing about how he views saisons that's definitive it can be almost anything and i think that's kind of what makes it rustic it lacks those definitions it lacks those refinements it doesn't have to have clove it's cool if it does but it doesn't have to it could have banana it could have coriander and orange it could have you know any variety of notes but it's whatever you seasonally have and whatever you decide. Or it's yeah. like that whatever night where you don't you. want to go to the grocery store. Right. What do I have like, in the fridge? What's in the fridge? Like, what do we got? What is in the right. fridge? And I've looked at that from the side of brewing, and I'm like, well, I mean, traditionally you'll do like a Pilsner base with a bit of wheat, add some flaked wheat for body, whatever. But now I'm like, man, should I throw some corn in this mash? Should I do whatever to just be like, let's like see it, what happens. What's yeah. coming around from local farmers that I can extract carbohydrates from to... The other day, I didn't want to go to the store, so for dinner, I had a leftover corn dog, a bowl of chili, and a piece of avocado toast. What do you think about those in a saison? Not that kind of brew. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that qualifies as rustic, too. That's rustic. I think it's a rustic, rustic dinner. I, I don't know if it's a rustic <laughs> saison or not. But I was a fan of Limp Biscuit when I was in high school. Yeah. And yeah. so chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water. See? And now I feel like yeah. you got me onto something. And hot dogs that have been cooked in the same water for generations. Or not generations. The Solera. Hot dog Solera. There was <laughs> a hot dog Solera. I think in Pennsylvania, <laughs> there was a hot dog beer, right? That, Actually, I think that was Kentucky, and I think that was uh, against the grain. Did it? Didn't? Wasn't it? It might have been. I thought I was thinking it was like a convenience store chain out of well, Pennsylvania. They, they did, did a it. fried. Oh, that may have been it too. It, they did a fried chicken beer out of against. I the believe grain. so. It might have been the same people, but there's that a was couple, against the grain. Yeah, yeah. Was that against the? Oh, yeah. yeah the the Kentucky fried chicken. They actually had twine and feathers on it at one point in yeah, time. Yeah, it was, it was, it was not delicious. Good stuff. Also rustic. Also quite rustic. Yeah. But that's you know a non rustic you know like a clean pilsner, a clean dry you know straightforward pilsner that wouldn't be rustic you know like you would get from a saison. 
I think I kind of got it out of one of the saisons I drank prior to the show where it, it kind of, I got this feeling of like being outside and there's a lot of stuff going on, but I'm like something about this seems like it could be rustic. I'm just like, I don't, the I'm not sure, if it, not sure if this is somebody this described is, it as huh? that. I'm like, I think I get what they're saying. Yeah. So I'm just never quite sure what people mean by that when I read it. Well, the it, beer can be refined, but the style is not. And I think that's the difference. Oh, because okay. it's it's referring more to the process than the actual end product. There you go. Okay, that's, I guess that's, that's my answer right there. On the yeah. farmhouse. <laughs> cheers, cheers to cheers that. Get some yeah. cheers here. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Britt, you had mentioned that you tend towards the Belgian saisons, and I don't think we see a lot of division commercially between like Belgian and French. I think that's more the homebrewer side. You talk about the Belgian saisons are traditionally going to be more the fruity esters displaying, where a French may be a little drier, a little spicier. You know, a little sharper, but we don't see that break out as much commercially, do we? I don't think so. Off the top of my head, I don't think I can name that many French saisons necessarily. I went Googling looking for examples because I was thinking, well, I went down the list right. and it was like, that's Belgian. Well, that's Belgian. Well, that's Belgian. And I did find a few on various brewery websites, but they were all one offs that had been discontinued like five or six years ago when maybe people really more into saisons or they were more into saisons. Well, and I, I think a lot of that, and this, this is something I actually have from my research into like Flemish Reds. When you look at Belgium, if you split that country in half on a diagonal, the part closest to Denmark, like there, that's the Flemish region. So their style is going to be darker and their saisons lean that way too. But the Southeast is more French influenced. So I think a lot of the French style is still labeled as Belgian because it's coming out of that area. So maybe a little lighter, but also a little spicier. So, okay. Yeah. I, that makes sense. I, yeah. I heard that it's a very interestingly divided country, like two different kind of backgrounds. So that makes a lot of sense. I like to include that. It also includes the Netherlands. Yeah. The Netherlands. Yeah. All the good beers happening over there. Where my, gran- my grandma and grandpa were born. So Okay. All right. <laughs> Not Brian. that they knew anything about beer. They knew a lot about God. About God? About okay. God. Okay. okay. All right. Well, I mean, it's water to wine, man. There's, there some, there's some precedence there. Yeah. You are listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take another break, but we'll be back very soon with more on Saison's. Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're Storytime Construction, and we build breweries. We're Georgia's most experienced and hands-on contractors when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding existing breweries. We offer full build-outs, remodeling, and additions, as well as consulting and construction management. Give us a call at 770-733-4343. Storytime Construction. We build breweries. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Your revolution is over, Mr. Lebowski. Condolences. The bum's lost. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash beerguys. Patrons get cool perks like Beer Guys swag and commercial-free episodes. Now let's get back to some Saison talk. Saisons. Brian, we just opened a bottle you brought in. What are we, we drinking? We did. It's a 2013 Boulevard Saison Brett, as I recall. And uh, the bottle was stolen because the dregs were getting added to another bottle full of okay. dregs. And All they right. will be used for something in the future, a blend, I think. A yeast blend. I think. But, uh, we may see this in, at Frame Shift, huh? We may. We may, in fact. It <laughs> yeah. may be some small portion of something that we drink later on at Frame Shift. So, yeah, 2013 only. 4,100 cases of this were produced, and I've been sitting on this for entirely too long. It had to be open tonight. had to be open. Yeah. You know, we've talked about both Saison's and Brett beers not being as cool as they were a few years ago, but both just phenomenal. 
I oh, like absolutely. a good old Brett character in a beer. The people listening need to open up a Saison, and they will realize what they've been missing, and they will want to drink Saisons. I drank a few in preparation for the show, and I'm like, that's all I want to drink right now. I haven't told you this yet, Brian, but I did find out that Synesthesia Saison will be part of the regular tap list at a brewery that's opening in Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, really? It oh. will be. Yes. Oh, I, yeah. I really hope that we get the version of it from uh, the Fort Worth. Yeah, so brewery. we have a friend yeah. opening uh, Neutral Ground Brewing Company in Fort Worth, and he texted me and said, hey, man, can I use... Synesthesia is my saison recipe. I was like, absolutely. Is he going to do so the pesh version yeah. of it? I'd like to try that I don't that think again. so. I oh, don't think all right. so. I mean, just got to ship him some Georgia pizzas. That's it. Yeah, send him some pizzas down there. Collaboration time, right? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I yeah. guess maybe their peach supply isn't so big down there. In Texas, yeah, probably, right. Possibly not. Yeah. But speaking of brewing saisons, we want to talk something for our homebrew friends here and kind of give them some tips, some ideas of what we like in a saison and kind of the standard recipe and where to go from there. Britt, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Really, you can use Noble Hops, Pilsner, and a Saison yeast, and, and you got a good Saison. And you're good to go. I mean, you need nothing else but that. I like a, I like a wheated Saison. Yep. So I always put a little white wheat when we brew ours. Uh, we also used a little uh, candy sugar, a little simple, the simplicity. the very, Dry it out a little bit. Dry it out yeah. a little bit more. You know, kick the ABV a little bit, dry it out a little bit more. But as you mentioned, the kitchen sink, the chili dog, and the avocado toast right? your saison. <laughs> Use what you have available. <laughs> hey. so, yeah, so these farms would have used, uh, traditionally, I think it was a six-row winter barley, if I remember looking it up correctly, yep. was the, the most common grain at the time. So that's what they would have used at the time, the most common one. But spelt, oats, uh, wheat, you know, whatever was around there, Corn, whatever rice. grains they had would have went into that brew. I think it's the original hyper-local terroir beer because, while they weren't wealthy people. They had what they had. They took the bar- the barley that they had and the ingredients that they had and whatever and put it all together in that. So different farms would necessarily have different beers just because they yeah. had different supplies. It's the local cupcake shop that no one knew they wanted. That's exactly. it. Right exactly. There. <laughs> and I saw a lot, of the, a lot of the recipes that I'm seeing now would use a little Munich or Vienna malt. And I yep. think Care Munich, Care Munich is one point for that is head retention. Is that correct? Yeah. Totally, and also yeah. I would like to say that the Munich edition is probably all for Larry Bell. <laughs> okay, that's I, I was you know? I was kind of wondering with that. That, that boy puts Munich in everything. Yeah, a little bit in there, but uh, yeah, you know what? Break it out and make it happen. As far as the the brewing process, mashing and boiling, nothing really special with that outside of any other beer, correct? I feel like we know you want to mash the mash l- temps, mash right? a little bit lower. Um, but you can mash high too. It just really depends on your yeast. Again, that, yeah. that's always what I speak on, and then. Before, they'd always say, like, you need to boil for at least an hour and a half, boil for two hours, whatever. The grain we brew with now is modified enough that... Right. That six-row winter barley would have needed because... Of, yeah, but what is it that you're trying to drive out with the longer boils? Our it's modern... Like DME or, or... I forget. Yeah, it's DMS. 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 There DMS. we go. But DME it's not an issue. Extract. extract. There <laughs> we go. I knew it was close. It's been a little yeah. while since I homebrewed. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but that's not an issue with the no. modern grains that we have there. It, so. I mean, it can be. I don't... Yeah. I, I do a 60-minute boil. I mean, you... Right. But also, I'm like... And speaking of the, the mass temperatures, for those that may not know... I think 150 degrees is kind of the cutoff point where you get short chain versus long chain sugars. If you're we mashed ours at 148 degrees. Okay. And what that does is it produces short chain sugars that are more highly fermentable. If you mash over that, you know, you get up a lot of these thicker beers will go 156, 158 or whatever cuz they want to retain some of that body in the beer. But if you mash 150, 148, somewhere in that, the enzymes that are active are going to convert more short chain sugars that are going to be more highly fermentable. And I think the different amylases are active at different temperatures as well, so your betas have have a certain range and it's been too long. I don't remember the alpha and the beta amylase have different activity range and I forget, I think the beta Oh, I can't remember. One of them chewed up the longer chains more than the other one did. It's so, the, yeah, yeah, conversion to short versus long chain sugars. And exactly, that's so yeah. If you want a nice dry saison, ferment 150 or below, get those short chain sugars so your yeast is just going to eat it up. But, Britt, like you mentioned, some of those yeasts don't care. They're just going to chew through it, right? They don't care. And then also the other thing I would say is something you don't pay attention to is water chemistry. Look at your water chemistry anytime. If you're homebrewing any style, I mean, saison sure, especially, because you got to look at where you're at. But where do you want to come in? Right. Yeah, because the chemistry, and that's something we and never mess with a lot. But that's because our water, where we brew, I'm in Woodstock, Georgia. Uh-huh. We had really great water for beers like Saison's. Yeah. So I, I ran it through a filter, and that was it. So not yeah. great for IPAs. Where not great at, for not IPAs out of, was not. Not out of the tap, Not without anyway. some chemistry. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you exactly. guys just have a, you don't have a Burtonizing thing in your garage? We did. Uh, not no. yet. We were getting there. We had a we great filter, there. though. Yeah. <laughs> and a, yeah. A, a very specialized hose for uh, delivery. We did. The RV water. water. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. 
So a lot of people make a, a big thing about it, like the yeast contribution and, you know, like your mash temperatures. How important is the actual temperature at which you ferment is in terms of the end result of it? Is it pretty crucial? So I think we played around with it what, a lot. Let's go chronologically, and we'll talk about firm oh, temps here in a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so we've got the mashing, then you moving into the hopping there. Yeah. Should be fairly hoppy. You know, some hop presence there, but really only need like an early edition for bittering and then maybe a late edition, correct? Yeah. Well, again, it's just having fun. But like if you want to go super traditional, you're going to add a, a bittering hop right at 60 minutes, noble hop. And then maybe one at about 15. Right, and right. In the way that I think about it, or think about traditional, I just did quotes in the air. You can't hear those, just FYI. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I right. said them yeah. every time now, so that's why I pointed out. Quote on the radio. <laughs> air quotes. No, but I think that's one of the more fun things to play around with is doing different hop edition. Like you said, like when y'all were brewing a Saison, you did sure. like a Whirlpool edition. Yeah. I like to bring my Whirlpool down to about 180, add some very fruity hops to complement the yeast that I'm throwing in there, but also you want to make sure that if you want to do any sort of sour saison or have any souring or have your lactobacillus be active, then you want to keep your IBUs down. I like to keep them below five just to be safe that the culture is going to be good to go. Right. Right. Because if you're over 10, you're not really going to get any sourness to anything. Like some of the ones we've tasted today had a little bit of sourness to them. But that, if you didn't want that sourness, you could get it up there to kind of inhibit the growth of that. Correct. Yeah, if you're not correct. going for that. Yes. Correct. And that may have been one of the reasons traditionally they did it on the farm is that they got it up there would help inhibit the growth there of some of that sourness, give them a little cleaner beer. Yeah. So, but that's now talking of bringing in sour and all that, the yeast that you use, that is the game changer in Saison. That's where the magic comes in. And from a home brewing standpoint, we've got a lot of choices now. And Britt, you mentioned that you like Omega. Is that correct? That is correct. And I think when we were brewing, Brian, Wiley, Y yeast and White Labs and some of the dry yeast were really about the only choices we had. Pretty much. And I think we favored the, the WLP 566 and 565. And I think that ours for the synesthesia was 566. 566. And the yeah. dark winter saison that I did, because uh, I wanted more phenolics, I think I was going to look for more of those out of the 565. But that one has a tendency to stall a bit, I believe. It does. Yeah. That's the, the, so 565 is, I don't know if it's confirmed or believed to be, but is the, the DuPont strain of yeast. Yeah. So, which is also matches up with the... I think it's a Y yeast thirty seven twenty four is their version of the Dupont strain, but it is known to stall out about halfway through the ferment and just hang there for a little while. The five six six that we use the saison too didn't have that stalling problem; it would just chew straight through. Right. Yeah. And so we would just go with that. But you have choices. Everything from we got one a American farmhouse blend that had some brett and stuff in it that brought that character out there. And I think we actually fermented with our five six six and then pitched that farmhouse blend later. And mm-hmm. kind of let it do its work. Is that there. the one we put half in green bottles and half in brown to see what would happen I think so. with a little bit of yeah. light struck? So the Brett and all of that, but there's yeast. Look around. You, you mentioned the Saison Steins Monster from Omega that yep. you used. That was a nice blend. And that's a Belgian French blend, so it gets a little yeah. bit both characteristics right. from that. Yeah. But I think yeah, I think the beauty in the Saison blend is to start keeping your yeast. Yeah. See what happens with it. Research so it doesn't kill you. That's important. <laughs> That's important. That's a good thing. Right. Try to I, avoid dying. I, I guess I would say of utmost important. Well, guys, we've got just a very little bit of time, but Brian, you mentioned this fermentation temperatures. Yes. We went hard and heavy. Standard thing is let it start at room temperature and just free rise. Just let it do its thing. Good beer to brew if you are a new home brewer and you don't have fermenta- or temperature control Yes. You know, because you can just let it go. We fermented as high as 90 degrees and got great results. How do you do yours, Britt? So I ferment mine at 72. Just right there, huh? Okay. Just keep uh, it right there, huh? There's a weird story. You say, someone I worked with said, have you seen the movie 69? I like it. Have you seen 72? It's even better. Okay. And it was never there you explained go. to Even me. better. But that's it. Just just do what you, it'll take higher temperatures. It'll do well with that. Keep it at room temperature and you'll be just fine there. Guys, we are out of time. We really appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having sharing us. Sharing your knowledge and sharing your beers. We had a really good time with it. Indeed. Well, that does wrap it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. Join us next week as we talk with Switchback Brewing. We are Beer Guys Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers. Cheers.